Welcome to Trinity To Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck. I'm Pastor Mark Narum, and I am so glad that you have found your way to us to be able to worship with us today. This is worship for the week of transfiguration. So we begin our worship service this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray our prayer of the day this day. O oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus your beloved Son. You foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading on this Transfiguration Sunday comes to us from the book of Exodus. A little bit of background. At Mount Sinai, Moses experienced the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. The glory of the Lord settled on the mountain, and on the seventh day, God called out Moses. On the mountain, God gave Moses the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments. A reading from Exodus, the 24th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there. I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and Ur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Our gospel reading for this week of transfiguration comes to us from the book of Matthew, the 17th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. If you look outside, you can tell that the seasons, they are a-changing. The days are getting longer, over 10 hours of sunlight a day, I understand, by listening to the local weathermen. I also see it with my own eyes that when the sun is out during the day, even if it's cold out, the sun has more power. Even on a cold day, it has the ability to begin melting snow. 
the seasons, they are a changing inside our worship gathering as well. Transfiguration Sunday, this Sunday when we remember the day that Jesus was transfigured on the mountain there with Moses and Elijah serves every year kind of as a transition point within the church. The transition point from the season of Epiphany into the season of Lent. We're ready to make a transition. The season of Epiphany is this season where we have been together in worship. It is the light of the world being made known to the world. The light which no darkness overcomes, it's said in the Gospel of John. And we know that light is Jesus, the beloved Son of God. The seasons, they are a-changing, and a shift is happening. As I read through texts this week, the texts both from Exodus and the ones from the Gospel of Matthew, holding them together in tension, there were a couple of words that really stuck out to me. In Exodus, it was the word, wait. It's used twice in the midst of that text from the 19th chapter of the book of Exodus. Let me set up the story for you a little bit while I grab my Bible here. In the 19th chapter of the book of Exodus, at the beginning of that chapter, we're told that the people come to the mountain, Mount Sinai, in about the third moon since they came across the Dead Sea dry shod. So give or take three months they've been wandering to get to this point. Three months they've been cared for by God. Three months it must still be burned in their mind, safely getting through the Dead Sea as the Egyptians chase them, trying to recapture them. But here they are free and they come to the mountain. And early on in the chapter, God has a conversation on the mountain just with Moses. This is a conversation that happens before, a later conversation that is being spoken of in our reading today. But in the first conversation, God tells Moses to tell the people that they should follow God and basically, God says, they will be a special people of mine if they do. And then, God gave instructions to Moses for how the people should prepare themselves before coming close to the mountain. How they should wash their clothes. How they should wash themselves. How they should make themselves ready. They are a special people. And Moses has been called up along with his assistant Joshua to come up the mountain to encounter the living God and be given the Ten Commandments. Wait is the word. Wait here for me. Waiting's hard. You know it. I know it. It can be really, really hard. When my kids leave, middle son going to school at UND right now, when he and his girlfriend come home and make a visit and then head back east, if the weather is a little bit sketchy, I wait for a text or a phone call that they've made it home safe. I can be a worrier. I hate sitting in hospital waiting rooms while a loved one is in surgery because my mind can play tricks with me, with coming up with all sorts of scenarios of what could be happen, happening behind those walls where my loved one is in the midst of surgery. What's going wrong? What are they finding out? What's happening? I can worry. I can worry quite well. Waiting is hard. And if you d dig into the book of Exodus, you find out just how hard it is for God's chosen people. Waiting. They turn their backs. 
We start here in the 19th chapter of the book of Exodus, but if you continue reading on all the way up to the very beginning of chapter 32, what you hear is over these 40 days, Moses not only gets the Ten Commandments, he gets all sorts of instructions about how the people are to live, how they're to worship, all sorts of things are placed before him. But down below, down below as Aaron is in charge, all of the sudden the people give up on waiting. They throw up their hands and they say, who knows what happened to this Moses guy anyway? Who knows what has happened to him? Who knows what this God has done? And you know the story. They convince Aaron to help them build a golden calf, a false god that they can drop down on their knees and worship. Waiting is hard, especially if we're waiting on God. If you are living at a point in your life where maybe the juice has been sucked out of you and spiritually you are just feeling dry and you're wondering, Lord, where are you? Waiting like that is hard. Maybe you've been given some sort of diagnosis and you're not certain what the future is or you're engaging with a cancer diagnosis and treatment. Waiting is hard. Maybe you're the family member who is standing by seeing something happening to your loved one. Fill in the blank of what it is and you know how waiting is hard. Waiting on the Lord is difficult. But what I want to remind you, what I want you to hear again and again and again, is that you are a beloved child of God. Named and claimed in baptism as God's very own. Hold fast to that promise. You know, when we do a baptism, we light a baptismal candle, we hand it off to the family, and we say to them, on the anniversary of your child's baptism, pull out this candle, light it, to remind you what God has done here. Maybe when the waiting gets hard, it's time to pull out a candle. Your candle. You can name it your baptismal candle, whether it was given to you at a font or night or not. Light that candle to remind you of the light which has come into the world, the light which no darkness can overcome as you wait upon the Lord as you work to build trust within your very being that God is with you, to walk with you and care for you and keep you in this moment and in every moment. The other word that I told you that just grabbed me was listen. There it is, the transfiguration of the Lord is going on. Jesus turns this glowing white, epiphany light, an aha moment. This is the one, this is the beloved Son of God. And a voice comes from the heaven, this is my Son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. I love that last line. In the midst of our waiting and wondering, in the midst of all that goes on, we have the opportunity to listen at the foot of the cross. And what do we hear? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Words from the Gospel of John. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy burden. Words from the Gospel of Matthew. Peace be still, Jesus spoke over a raging storm, and it was stilled from the Gospel of Mark. Listen to him. 
Listen to his words. Listen to this one who died and rose again for you. Not leaving us alone, but sending us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that as we wait, we can know that we're not alone. That through the waters of baptism, we too have been marked as beloved. This day, as hard as it is, I invite you to wait. And as you wait, to listen. Listen to this one who gives life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we do come before you in prayer this day, asking that in the midst of our waiting, whatever is going on in our lives, that you would give us the peace that surpasses all understanding, the kind of peace that keeps us connected to you, to your life, to your love, to your grace and mercy. Lord, we pray for people around us who are waiting who can't find peace, wrap them in your love. Lord, we pray for those who have lost hope in Turkey and Syria in the midst of that devastating earthquake, in the midst of the political mire that's going on, especially around Syria and the devastation that has happened and the people feeling abandoned. Lord, move governments to make aid possible. We pray for other places around the world, people who are losing hope because of governments that are bent on war instead of building up their people. Lord, we pray in this country for those who are feeling lost or lonely. We pray for members of this congregation who are sick or hurting or in need of your healing hand, especially this day we lift before you Don and Mike, Tim, Annette, Jan and Jim, Elizabeth, Kathy, Eric, Mardell, Linda, John, Shane, James, and Wilbur. Lord, you know what we need. We lift it all to you in this time. Hear our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are so glad that you found your way to worship with us today. First thing I'm going to do is put up our address and would ask you if you find this ministry to be helpful um, to continue to share your offering, to share what God has first given you with this ministry so that we can continue to pray, pro proclaim God's good news, grace and mercy to let people know of God's incredible love for them, for you for all. A couple of, of announcements that I do want to share. February 26th is our annual meeting here at Trinity Lutheran. You know, if you can be here in person, we would love it. It will happen about 1130 in the morning after our 1030 worship. We'll gather here in the sanctuary. We will talk about the ministry that has happened here in the last year, and we would love to be able to pray and dream about the future as well. If you can be here, man, we'd love to have you. So a voting member at that meeting is a confirmed member who has, con who has um, communed and given a financial gift of record either in, 19 tw or in 2023 or 2022. Other announcements, guess what? Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We will have a worship service at 1215 in the community center. We will have a six o'clock worship service here in the sanctuary. There will be Holy Communion at both of those worship services and the imposition of ashes to those who would like that. Before both of those worship services, there will be a meal, a meal which will start being served at 1145, but you can come in at 12. 
12 or 1205, still grab a bowl of soup, sit and worship with us, or just come to worship. Uh, in the evening, meal starts being served at about 5 to 515. So come, join together with us as we enter into the season of Lent. Lots more things happening here at Trinity. We would love it if you'd go online. You can look at all of the announcements that are there in the bulletin. I think those are the things I want to share with you this day, except to say once again, I am thankful that you've worshiped with us. If you find this to be life-giving, let other friends and family members know about it. Help them find a way to hear the good news of Jesus Christ as well and God's love for them. Now receive the blessing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and always. I'm Pastor Mark Narum. Blessing to be able to worship with you this day. Until we gather again in worship, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.